Hi guys, welcome to Bobcat Sports Talk. I'm Jessica Carter, here with my two co-hosts, sophomore Jay Riley and sophomore Trey Howard. We're wearing a little bit of pink to celebrate Breast Cancer Awareness Month since it's October. And um, our first topic that we're going to start off with is Jones. Jones had their first loss last week. And um, it was pretty upsetting. The fans were really into the whole game, and it was just a really upsetting game. They lost 24-20. Um, to 20. Um, it was, and they had an opportunity in the fourth quarter to come back and get that extra touchdown, but Swindle couldn't throw it in the end zone, and he actually threw an interception. Each team had three fumbles and one interception, so it altogether really wasn't uh, a very good game on the offense side. But um, our next topic is college football. We had a lot of upsets this week. Um, we had two major upsets with Stanford and Notre Dame, and then we had Georgia and Missouri. I mean, guys, what are your thoughts on this? I was really upset with the Georgia. I thought that they were going to be, you know, a contender for the national championship this Troy, year. I watched the Georgia and Missouri game, and I could not believe that Missouri beat Georgia. Now, Georgia's missing five offensive pieces that they desperately need. They're missing some impact players. I still couldn't believe it, though, because Aaron Murray, you know, he's supposed to be coming out of the shell, and, you know, this is his senior season. It's his last shot at becoming a superstar quarterback, and he just hasn't really done it. Um, and I just saw, like, this – this game, I just saw him turn back into the older Aaron Murray that we saw back in his sophomore season, and it just wasn't who I thought I was going to see out there on the field. Before I get started, you said Stanford and the name of Stanford and Utah. Actually, uh. Stanford and Utah. Utah beat Stanford. But anyway, back to this Missouri game. Missouri, if you would have asked me what Missouri, what, what their record was before this game, I would have said 3-2. and two. They look like a 3-2 and two team. I don't know. But they were 5-0 and oh and ranked 25th in the nation. And the thing is, yes, um, Georgia's lost Todd Gurley and Keith Marshall, both out indefinitely. But they still put up 26 points. I don't, I don't think it's the, the offense's fault. The problem is Missouri. They're, like, really good. They put up 41 points, and that's, that's not a fluke. Their lowest output this year has been 38 points. In six games, they put up, what, 41, 38, 45, 41, 51, and 41. All Huge numbers. So this is a really good Missouri team. Nobody's been talking about Missouri. Right. Everybody's talking about Texas A&M coming from the Big 12 and making their stamp in the SEC last year. But this Missouri team is a really good Missouri team. But they just lost their quarterback. So I don't know. I don't know. You know how long he's going to be out or anything. But after seeing them lose their quarterback, Missouri lost their quarterback, and uh, I just don't know like if they're going to still you know win the next few games that they they play. Because without that quarterback, Missouri, you know, that quarterback's the one that leads that team. I'm glad you brought that up because their next game is at home against Florida. Can they beat that Florida team? Because right now they're in the driver's seat in the SEC East. Right. Can they beat this Florida team that shows up sometimes, sometimes not, they'll drop a 17-6 dud like they did this past week against LSU. Their next game after that is at home against South Carolina. So these are the two big games for them. If they can win these two games, they're in the clear for the SEC East. They, they win the SEC East, and can they run the table? That after that, they've got Tennessee, who played Georgia very hard, and they've got Kentucky. And the last two games, Ole Miss, Texas a and Texas A&M is the only problem I see. And it's not that Texas A&M is so much better than Missouri, because Texas A&M's defense, in the last, three of the last four games, they've given up 33, 38, and 49 points. And Missouri can score, as we know. So I'm looking at this schedule, I'm like, maybe Missouri can do it. Maybe they can not only win the ACC East, maybe they can run the table. This is a really good team. We'll just have to wait and see. That's true. Um, Stanford versus Utah. Can't believe Stanford got beat. Uh, Oklahoma and Texas. Oklahoma, you know, Oklahoma. That's man, more shocking that, to me. That Texas. Was, that was crazy. Like, how did how did Texas come back? You know, Matt Brown's supposed to be his last season. You know, on, on the edge, on the verge of being, you He's know, like, completely counted out, and now four and two. Texas, like, you know, watch out. Penn State and Michigan. Now that was a game. Three yeah, overtimes. Yeah. Both kickers, both kickers suck. Just so everybody knows, like they are, they are not anybody that you're going to want in the NFL. If any NFL scouts out there want to want to hear about this, don't don't take a Michigan uh, kicker or a Penn State kicker because that game came down to kicks and it ultimately was won by a kick and they just abysmal, you know, kicking in that game. But um, I still have to say these upsets were still really surprising over the weekend. Big upsets in college football this this past week. Yep. That's why you love college football, right? That's right. Yep. <laughs> Well, guys, we're halfway through the season, so I think we should talk about um, Super Bowl predictions. Uh, I'm going to go with the Saints and the Chiefs. And I know the Saints lost last night, but I think that would be a great matchup to see, a, a very interesting game. What do you guys think? What, are, what is your pick, Trey? Right now in the AFC, there are only two undefeated teams in the whole NFL, and they're both from the AFC, Broncos and Chiefs. 
And the easy pick right now is the Broncos, right? And mm-hmm. I can throw Peyton Manning stats at you, but you should have them memorized by now. Hey, Amen. But I think it's a little too easy pick. Peyton Manning is like the king of the seas in the regular <laughs> season. He is the he's Poseidon. But he gets to the postseason, he's more like SpongeBob. I mean, he's <laughs> he's nine and eleven in the postseason oh, with thirty two touchdowns and twenty one right. picks. Right. He he is the Tony Romo of the postseason since Tony Romo can't get into the postseason. He finds a way to lose with these great teams. He's been to mm-hmm. the Super Bowl twice, and he won one, and he threw the deciding pick. He has in the other always one. had the best defense. He's always had the best offense though. That Peyton Manning with anybody that that is. A complete. That is an offense that anybody All right. wants. All right, I give you that. He's not as clutch as he needs to be. But in the playoffs, he just finds those games to lose. And I, I don't see Peyton Manning. He making it to the AFC Championship, but he will lose along the way, and they won't get to the Super Bowl. Just like the Chiefs, Andy Reid, ten and nine in his postseason career. Now he's been to four NFC Championships and got to the Super Bowl. Never won it, but he got to the Super Bowl with uh, Donovan McNabb, Brian Westbrook, and Terrell Owens. Is Alex Smith, Jamal Charles, and Dwayne Bowe as good as those three? No. So I have the Chiefs, even though they're 6 0. I have them getting bounced out the playoffs. But the team I have gone to the Super Bowl, not the AFC, New England Patriots. They have, going into the season, they had two tight ends and Danny, Danny Amendola coming in. And you think they're just going to run rough shot on the NFL and just come out like gangbusters. But no, you lose one tight end to injury, another one goes to jail. Amendola, in the first two, in the first two games, he's hurt. So now Tom Brady has a host of nobodies. And they're still winning. Five and one. Tom Brady, Bill Belichick, they just find a way to win. And it seems like every other year the Patriots get to the Super Bowl. And this is that other year that they get to the Super Bowl at the AFC. My NFC teams, it's, it's a pick them out of three. 49ers, Seahawks, Saints. 49ers go as Colin Kaepernick goes. And I don't think Colin Kaepernick could lead them to that NFC championship and to the Super Bowl like he, should, like he did last year. He was, he was riding a hot streak all through the season. He came in, replaced Alex Smith. But right now, I think... Defense is starting to figure out uh, Colin Kaepernick, and I don't think he rides that wave to the Super Bowl. Saints and the Seahawks have a similar problem. They are great at home, so-so on the road. And if, if the road to the Super Bowl doesn't go through Seattle, doesn't go through New Orleans, they're going to have a problem. And I give the Seahawks a better shot than the Saints to win the NFC. So I got Patriots, Seahawks, and this year's Super Bowl right now. Okay. That's a good choice. Um, my Super Bowl predictions um – I know uh, history often repeats itself, and the Patriots have a good shot at going back to the Super Bowl. still think the Broncos are going to get done. Peyton's still probably ticked off about losing to the Ravens in a second overtime and throwing that pick that sealed the, sealed the game for him. Um, I think that it's actually going to happen. I think the Broncos are going to make it to the Super Bowl this season. And I think, out of all people, you know, uh, they'd be playing the Saints because I just know that the New Orleans Saints, even though they lost to the Patriots, I know that they've got it in them to compete with a team like the Patriots. The Patriots are reeling on all fours, even though, like, they're on all cylinders right now. Even though they don't have the players, the personnel that they need, they're still winning football games. Now, I'm not going to jump on that Patriots bandwagon just yet, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with my Broncos right now. But the defense for the Broncos has got to get better if they want to get to where they want to be. Um, but I've got the Broncos and the Saints. Those are my picks. Very good picks. Um, so I think we're going to wrap it up with just a final word. Um, I actually got to go to the Ole Miss and Texas A&M game this past weekend, so I didn't get to watch any other games that were going on. But what a game to go to. Almost, almost pulled it off, and it made just the intensity in the whole entire stadium just – what, what was your reaction since you were there? What was your reaction when Johnny Football went down? With I mean, the like, I thought he faked it because he just grabbed his leg and everybody was booing him. Texas A&M fans were crying. It was the best atmosphere you could be in on a Saturday night. And, I mean, Ole Miss, it was funny because they knew they were going to get beat, you know, and Texas A&M, <laughs> I mean, they didn't show up. And Ole Miss welcomed them to Mississippi, and it was just an outstanding game to go through. I mean, I thought I was going to be able to witness history, you know. <laughs> But, of course, they um, score the extra points and won. But that's why they're Texas A&M. It's because they finished the game. (laughs) Right. But, I mean, it was a great game. Ole Miss showed up, that's for sure. They gave them a – and I'm excited to watch LSU and Ole Miss next weekend. Um, I mean, obviously, Bo Wallace and Zach Mettenberger have nothing in common. It's not really going to be a good matchup. But, (laughs) I mean, maybe they'll do the same thing. The receivers gave a heck of a game. What's your final word, Jay? I'm going to talk about the NBA right now. Um – this is kind of off topic because, you know, we're not in the season yet, but preseason's just started. And Kobe Bryant said that if it were the playoffs, he would he would actually be able to play. 
Now, he said that not, not like completely confident that it was possible to do that, but he said that his Achilles, he's, he's starting to heal from it and everything's starting to get back into place and that he would be able to play if this were the playoffs. But since it's preseason, he says he wouldn't. So obviously that says that there's something still wrong because the only time Kobe's going to play in the playoffs if he's hurt is going to be because it's, it's going to be because he's clutch. It's because he's going to go out there no matter how much pain he's in and play. So that says that he's, there's still something wrong. Because he says, okay, I can't play in preseason. I may not even be able to play in regular season. But if this was the playoffs, I'm going to be like Michael Jordan, get out there and play through the pain. So hearing that from him, but knowing his personality, we knew that would be said. It's just kind of like, okay, dude, I'm worried about you more now than I would be if you would have just kept your mouth shut. You know? How does it make you feel being a Laker fan? Are you excited? Are you a little disappointed? <sighs> I'm excited because it shows that his character is like, I will play no matter what, especially if it's the playoffs. He's coming back. I'm, he has that confidence, but it's, I'm worried because he's like, okay, I have to open my mouth and tell people this because I don't know how long I'm going to be out. You know, it's kind of like a, I think it was a reverse psychology thing. I think it was a, he wanted to assure the Laker fans and, the, and you know, his, his uh, followers and his supporters that, hey, you know, I'm going to be back, but I just don't know when. But I'm going to tell you if this was a playoffs, you know, I would play. So it's like, okay, Kobe, what you trying to do here, you know? The Mamba, he's got the mindset. What about you? My final word, me personally, I love the professional all-star anything. From NBA to, to MLB to I love the NHL shootout that they do, the little trick shots they do. Yeah. But the, it's, it's safe to say that the NFL is the most popular game in America right now, right? Mm-hmm. Definitely. What's up? Why don't we have more All Star festivities for those guys? Now, I know they used to do something in they Hawaii, have, but they used to have a throw. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if they still do it because I didn't see it last year. But yeah. what, what happened to the, the biggest arm? I would like to see who has the biggest arm in the NFL, or the most accurate quarterback, or who's the fastest guy in the NFL, strongest guy. Like I think this, along with the game itself, like see the NBA has it right. Friday night they do the, the rookie game and the, the celebrity game. How fun would it be to see celebrities playing the football game or, or something be, like that? That would be cool. And when you get to the actual game, they have a new system this year. They have, what is it, the top six quarterbacks get assigned to different teams and the top two vote getters get to choose, I guess, playground style, uh-huh. who they want. Uh, not, it's not NFC against AFC. It's just I want you, you, or you. And they have new uniforms. I guess this is trying to attract new viewers or more viewers before yeah, they cut the game season, completely. Last season, I think they had the lowest they've ever had in history of watching it. Cause, I and mean, there's just offense. It's never any defense. I would hate to see that game leave because I love, like I said, yeah. love seeing that offside game. So I hope this works. And if so, add some more stuff. Keep people interested like me because I would hate to see the All-Star well, game in the league. Well, to add to your point, I think that they need to make a prize or something at the end for the team that wins. So there's actually some They do for the MVP. They do for the MVP. The MVP gets a car or the, the, something. The MVP, but everything else is like, okay, well, this guy, I'm not going to play defense on him because, you know, uh, this is an All-Star game. You know, we're already making our millions. I think there needs to be, like, some type of even a trophy or something. I don't know. Something to get to get people to be interested in, especially the players. Players, because the players are less interested in it than we are. And the NFC yeah. AFC format, I think it's, it's been like more money for the winning team. But money, they already make millions, so why give them money? So I get what you're saying. It yeah, should just be something, some kind of incentive. Yeah. I yeah. got it. Some great final words. Um, last but not least, I want to say um, prayers go out to Adrian Peterson and his family yes, as they're going through this hard time. Um, that's what you call an athlete for sure. He went out and still played. Absolutely. Um, so prayers, day. prayers out to him and his family. Uh, we had some great topics this week. Um, thank you for joining us this week. Um, I'm Jessica Carter here with Jay Riley and Trey Howard. And that's it this week for Bobcat Sports Talk.